guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is the only replay I have from BSL Hasu League Round of 32 Group B. We have Mr. Cat returning, bottom right hand corner as the Midnight Blue Protoss. Upper left hand corner, we have Radley. Can I do a color swap, actually? I'm going to do this because I it's a little easier on the eyes. Upper left hand corner, Radley starting as the Red Terran, Mr. Cat as the Blue Protoss. I think this is on Polypoid. I'm going to guess. Yes. Or no, Neil Silva? Yeah. Um... Sometimes those get mixed up in my brain for for whatever reason. It's not Vermeer, I will say. Uh, other side of the bracket, we have Scythe and then Targ. Um, I don't know the results all the way through, so we'll just have to see what happens in the round of 16. Round of 32. So the way Hasu League rules work is, is you're not required to upload replays for the round of 32. You are required, I believe, in the round of 16. So round of 16 will have... A little bit more action so i feel like this is kind of like the warm-up to the it's not to say this is the warm-up to the main event but it's like the warm-up to the main groupings if that makes any sense and we got a whole lot of return players i i'm trying to think if we got a single player in here who hasn't made a round of eight or isn't capable of winning the entire thing and i don't think that's the case overall i every player i look at i'm like if they play their best they could take it the pressure potentially on fisheye because he took second place last season and he's gone pretty deep multiple times but you also have other guys i'm rooting for herbmon for sure he's in the season of hasu league there's a lot of returners that are just really high quality we have a barracks being constructed on the high ground for radley and it looks like we're going to see the dreaded nexus first cross spawn for mr cat which usually plays off fairly well for sauce and gives a nice solid economic start and let's see if... Yeah, he's just going to scout to the bottom left. We'll see if Radley goes for a cross-spawn scout. This is a large enough map where it's challenging to really punish it. So we'll see how... We'll see how it goes overall. Gateway on the high ground. We do have a refinery up, which opens up some options. Mr. Gout checking, checking bottom left and finding nothing. So Radley will be in a position where you can... With that initial factor, he might have a spot where you can decide. Like, okay, yes, I am going to dedicate for an attack after this. But at cross spawn, it just makes it so challenging because there's just so much surface area to walk across. Factory planted. No initial marine. So some economics save there. So marine before factory, which means it's going to be all the faster. The probe going to wander in and unfortunately for Radley he's going to get the worst possible scout but because he went top right to bottom left as far as a follow up and so he's not going to notice so I, he's not going to be able to be in a position where he could react with a potential two factor he's got the single SCV now on gas if he was entering the base now he could have seen it and maybe gone for a follow up interesting though it's going to be gateway forge I'm much more often used to seeing a gateway shield battery potentially depending on what the Terran opponent's doing. And Mr. Cat actually got a pretty solid look. And is he going to go for proxy tech on top of everything else? He's sneaking that probe there at that 9 o'clock location. We'll have to see if a pylon gets constructed down the line to do a follow-up DT drop. That would, Just throwing out all of the Protoss things, potentially. SCV not going to be able to get in, but does notice the Nexus. Doesn't see, in fact, see the cannon. Cybernetic score has been produced. And a Zealot there on the low ground... As far as response, it looks like Radley just going to go one factory into expand, which is going to leave him in a more defensive economic position. We are, in fact, seeing a pylon drop now at that 9 o'clock. So I presume this is going to turn into Dark Templar. Zealot marching his way across the field. The barracks already landed on the front. We, do, we aren't seeing a bunker as of yet, but four Marines are sufficient to deal with the Zealot. Micro past that and then the Vulture to follow up, certainly enough. Mine's being researched as well. The Zealot actually kind of sacrificing himself on the forward field. But that does buy time. Retreating to the high ground. Nice thought. Going to get expended otherwise and doesn't really have a good look at how many Marines were on the front as well. SCV, look at this. So Radley, oh, he's going to pay hard for this. So Citadel of a Dune being snuck at the 9 o'clock. And Radley trying to 
play Protoss style of zone. I think frustrated by that cross spawn Nexus first, gonna go for a command center at the 12 o'clock location. Was gonna try to sneak that, recognizing that Protoss more often than not are in a defensive position as far as a follow-up play. But Mr. Cat already has the gateway and Templar archives morphing at the nine o'clock location. This is gonna slow down many forms of detection. And I think mines might have gotten canceled. No, never mind. Mines are there, but they have not yet been planted yet. So effectively, what can happen here, we do have a mine on, on the front here as well. Let's see if Radley's able to scout this out. If he's able to scout it, that'll be huge. And also, another big factor is, is will Mr. Cat play overly aggressive and get the initial Dark Templar out, but not wait for a second Dark Templar? So a lot of factors in play that still could move to Radley's advantage. One, if he sneaks into that 9 o'clock, it looks like he's making the full rounds here with this Vulture. So that could be critical. He's going to find a probe here bottom left. Unfortunately, that might cause him... Nope. Okay, it's on cycle. It's going to continue. And another Vulture moving out. It's going to find the tech in time. Huge. Now he just needs to drop some mines. And get some additional support. But he needs those mines immediately. Right now, that Vulture doesn't have any mines remaining. Another Vulture... No mines left there as well, so the Dark Templar are actually going to be able to produce. Might be able to kill this Vulture. Okay, backing out. We do have the mines in a blockade now on the front. A siege tank out as well. Do we have the... We do have an engineering bay. Missile turret as well. The Vulture ignored. The Zealot pressing forward to clear the... So the Zealot and Dragoon going to sacrifice themselves to try to clear these mines on the front. And a nice kill there by the Vulture is able to keep that active. Dark Templar are going to try to sneak along that corner. Is able to get into the natural expansion, but there is detection there. And the mine not exploding. Okay, now takes out that Dark Templar. So all of a sudden, Radley in a fantastic situation. Where if he's just got a few mines, he can move out to this... 3 o'clock, take all that tech out. Looks like the Dragoon's trying to move in to provide some semblance of a defense. The Vulture going to block the high ground. That should allow a uh, mine drag into those Dragoons and clear this up otherwise. Uh, is it? Yeah. Well, at least one. That second one is just going to get sniffed on. Oh, all misfires there. Okay. So a second ET might make its way out, but it's going to hit mines immediately, and that 12 o'clock base is up and running, which puts Radley economically ahead. So nice follow-up play. Good mine drag at least to uh, create a little bit of time. Mr. Cat responding... By trying to sneak, and this is unfortunate for Mr. Cat, because so he's trying to sneak an extra base bottom left. He's already got Zealot leg speed. He's gone for a gateway flood behind this. And has he detected the 12 o'clock is the next question. So there's mines, a lot else. Keep in mind, Radley skipped a lot of troops. And they're just going to careen to that natural expansion. If they get some good mine drags in between, might be able to punish Radley for... A lot. So, yeah, trying to mind drag and make this happen. Grouping up big mind splash, softening the rest up, unfortunately. And it looks like that army is, in fact, cleaned up. And now supply is getting dangerously close. Mr. Cat not holding up, though. More zealots careening in. And without the defensive clutter, Radley's natural expansion now exposed. The second Dark Templar making its way up. Tank sieging a zealot in the main. <clears throat> And the Dark Templar working on the bunker on the low ground. Looks like some solid defense from Radley holding the ramp, though. Bunker up, but there's no Marines to get inside. More Zealots making their way up. It looks like it's Vultures and a Comsat drop to clean up the Dark Templar. And the Zealots getting boxed out and cleaned up otherwise. Radley floating a lot of resources. If he can just spend a lot of it, he'll be in a strong position. He's got four factories on three bases. I'm hoping to see additional. That armory remaining silent right this second as well. So a delay on plus one weapons, now getting additional clutter out on the front. But Mr. Cat not through yet, continuing to flood additional troops up. Has that bottom left, some cannons in the way. Somehow managed to salvage that nine o'clock. So it hasn't lost any tech. The Zelt's just marching in, mind dragging. What this is doing from Mr. Cat's perspective is buying him some time to get that third base up and running. But now some vultures marching their way out. Should be able to kill these... Zealots in open field, a bunker defensively at the 12 o'clock, just in case that got scouted. Has Mr. Cat discovered it? It looks like he's making his way that direction, so might have. A Firebat will help against these Zealots immensely. 
So yeah, now discovers that third base. Potentially was like, okay, you were... You had too much... Too early. And Radley able to seal that up. However, that bunker... Somewhat out of position. Zealots not able to scoot through. A single Marine trying to defend. Actually, one Zealot able to skirt through. But being drawn... The rest of that, and the vulture is going to be able to defend. Six o'clock base being attempted to grab a spider mine in the way. Yeah, that fire bat chewing through. So a few SCVs getting killed here, but Radley still has the overall economic lead. And he's three bases versus three. Could be a lot worse for Mr. Cat, but that still usually means Protoss is behind, and Radley's actually very, very close in supply. Dragoon's moving out, but this is a lot of gateways, and Mr. Cat has been macroing very, very well, where Radley has been floating a lot of resources up to this stage, and he's also been somewhat delayed on that plus one weapons. We have a Covert Ops? Is that right? Covert Ops being constructed in the main. So Radley looking to stunt a bit, going to be able to absorb that probe and deny a fourth base to Mr. Cat, which is going to Help cement that economic lead, trying to pick off the Zealots out of this attack force to just leave it with Dragoons. There are not a lot of siege tanks on the front for Radley. He's been running on a single machine shop this entire time. So five factories, single machine shop, which has kept that siege tank count rather low. That tends to be the big, strong point of the Terran army. So neglecting that a little bit, Templar Archives gonna have uh, gonna get wiped out momentarily. Six o'clock base being constructed for Mr. Cat in the meantime. Mr. Cat has a 15 supply lead, but that's actually a larger lead than usual, again, because of the small siege tank, because of the siege tank deficit, really. This is the only siege tank I see on Radley's side of the map right this second. Second one just spawning. Second machine shop, I would, ex I would hope for a third machine shop, really. Especially sitting on three bases right this second. But Mr. Cat, despite a lot of the chaos, and honestly, what I thought would be an easy economic win for Radley, stabilizing a bit, going to double expand behind this to maintain the lead. We have Lockdown getting researched, Ghosts being produced as well. So these guys given us a fantastic game to start off. Arbiter Tribunal being built bottom left-hand corner. So it looks like the, I am not sure if this is going to be aggressive Ghost play. And uh, I don't think a transition to Deep Six because I just don't see the room for the barracks, nor do I see a lot. Well, we do have a second barracks being constructed. Another factory being tacked on. That's cutting into the weapons upgrades as far as timing a bit. Not monstrous, uh, honestly not monstrous considering everything that's happened in the game. Usually you'd expect a little bit earlier though, off a quick third base grab. Looks like Radley gonna go ahead and grab his command center as well, an exciting one for the opener here in group B. Vulture's able to skirt through those cannons. There's another cannon waiting for them, but there is a pocket position where they can deny some mineral lines. I do believe they've gotten eyes on the Arbiter Tribunal as well. Another cannon being dropped to try to provide some relief at that location. Let's see if the Dragoons march through this minefield as well. There is an Observer alongside, and I think Observer speed somewhere between. Decent amount of kills were actually even on workers, and it looks like the mines not being absorbed pretty pretty studiously there by Mr. Cat. Radley getting an additional base up. He might actually even move in to grab that nine o'clock. Some mines blocking off everything in a vulture blocking off top right. The observers being rallied, it looks like, to the front to spot. Siege tank count has now risen quite a bit, but what I'm more interested in is these three four ghosts now at the 12 o'clock location building some energy. Is this going to turn into some sort of interesting mid-game assault on the Dragoons or is it just to try to negate the Arbiter plays? The next question. The ghosts are forward and they've been spotted by that observer that with that telltale uh, rifle shot. Massive supply surge from Mr. Cat off a very healthy gateway count at his main. Moving bottom left to potentially defend that location. The ghosts piled in over that mineral only. So this isn't along your, your typical Arbiter engagement routes. I'm still concerned about the siege tank count number because this is still, what, seven? Eight and a dropship in between. Cloaking is being researched. Is that 
that, that is cloaking for the ghosts. So I'm wondering if Radley gonna go for a ghost drop at some location. Is main, so main getting mined out. There's a cannon there to provide detection. There's cannons here to provide detection. Three o'clock base also has cannons warping in. So I don't know that there's gonna be a place to really make an effective, mostly because the potential vulture threat kind of negates that ability. 20 supplied lead now for Mr. Cat Radley has actually been able to fill it in fairly evenly. It's trying to get a base count. So we've got three, four, five active bases. Versus just three for Radley. His main is, is uh, actually it's four base. So main not quite mined out. So I was negating to, to count that one. So four, five, six. Potential seventh on the way. So six versus four, which should give Mr. Cat the lead. Single ghost walking forward for Radley. And EMP also getting, or sorry, never mind. Optical flare. This is looking like it's going to transition to a deep six. If you're unfamiliar with that strategy, it's a sudden transition away from mech to a large medic marine ghost composition against Protoss mid-game. And sometimes it can catch a Protoss off guard in particular if they haven't invested in Psystorm or Reavers to engage Splash. Usually what you see alongside of it though is a double engineering bay with upgrades. And I'm not seeing a move away from factories right this second, but seeing all sorts of... We're seeing a optical flare being researched off a of medic, which usually you don't grab that. And a nuke. <laughs> all right. So Radley wanting to put on a show here. EMP nuke combo is pretty deadly. Optical flare on these observers could negate the ghost's movement. They have to be detected first. And I haven't seen any medics. I'm still curious about the optical flare upgrade overall. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be... So we got one nuke here. Do we have any other... Looks like it's just going to be the single silo. Part of the problem with nuking an opponent is, is you can you can hit an Nexus pretty hard. Yeah, so we got... I'm curious what this is going to turn into. Arbiter bottom left. A ghost marching out. So we, we have the double optical flare, potentially, to blind observers to allow that nuke to fall. But there's still cannons at all locations. So Radley's going to have to play this very, very carefully. Scooping in two vultures as well. Vultures testing top right. Mr. Cat grabbing that territory. There's the uh, science vessel to provide some EMP as well. And this might... Yeah, this is probably going to die before it gets off the ground because I just don't see a lot of space for Radley to maneuver around. Ghost going to go on the ground now, cloak past all of this. And I assume go for an assault at the 6 o'clock or the natural. Mr. Cat rebuilding bottom right. So now... So Comsat there. There's a cannon, so he needs to be careful. Waiting for it. The nuke is complete. The question will be, where's the nearest observer? Does this stay out of photon cannon range? And does Mr. Cat react to the nuke rapidly enough? Science vessel making its way out. Kind of poking towards that bottom left. It, so he knows... Here's the thing. The other thing is Mr. Cat knows of this potential. So there's the red dot. And now it's the game for Mr. Cat to figure out where it's launched. He sees the dot. So it doesn't look like he is going to be able to get the gas probes out. The zealot's moving in just to die. And Nexus takes quite a beating there as well. But the probes were in fact saved. So a few probes get wiped out, a cannon, a few zealots. Additional cannons being plopped down to make that a, a harder attempt in the future. Another nuke initially being built, ocular in implants as well. Vultures shoving into the three o'clock to take out probes. One thing, my problem with this for Radley is he still hasn't expanded to the nine o'clock. 
he is making his way towards a massive... He's got a massive mech army regardless. But Mr. Cat has a, a healthy gateway grouping bottom left. He's already started to stage up top right. In fact, looking for the probe transfer that direction. It looks like he's actually going to transfer to the 3 o'clock after that flood. Ghost takes a couple hits as it's... This is kind of a... Well, there's some probes here, but I don't know that there's a lot... Maybe you can nuke over the wall with a commsat? Probe transfer. I assume that's going top right. This could be clever. Commsat, he needs to get a move on with it though because it doesn't have a lot of energy. But he could commsat drop the nuke on top of the gateway count. And if you could somehow get a science vessel in between there, it'd be absolutely amazing. Two locations to nuke from. I actually like nuking the, the gateways over the next, but it looks like he's going to go ahead and nuke the mineral only. Try Just a handful of probes there, seven probes. I don't think that's worth the cost. And two siege tanks now moving their way top right. Nine o'clock base now getting grabbed. That nuke lands, catches a few probes. But uh, again, I don't know that if that was worth it. However, the probe count has sunk quite a bit between that last vulture attack. And actually, I feel like these siege tanks did more than those nukes. Some nice distraction. Killing a lot of probes here top right. Finally, the Dragoons able to get the surround. And clear that up. We got nuke play this season of Hasu League. Love it. First time I think I've seen it in Hasu League. And the ghost is still alive. Low on energy, however. Still think there's some more active ghosts, but... Secondary problems for Mr. Cat... This is a f massive mech army that's looking to move out shortly. He's got some army pocketed mid position, but he hasn't really done anything and the upgrade's not there for him yet either. It is up to Radley to come to him at this stage. He's more than split the math in half. Bradley's slowly comps adding and making his way out. So do, now the question is, is, does Mr. Cat have... He doesn't... I don't see any Arbiters. He's got one Arbiter bottom left. No High Templar. And he doesn't... I don't think he has the upgrades to really make this work. Beautiful Mind Drags initially, however. Taking out some Ghosts. A couple Lock Stations. And actually a nice engagement from Mr. Cat overall. Regardless, some empty lockdowns, but it looks like he's got a sufficient supply to just barrel through and wipe out that standing army despite the upgrade advantage. A beautiful swarm from multiple directions. Now Radley in a lot of trouble, actually. Down 20 supply. Beautiful lockdown over to double lockdown. This is actually where Mr. Cat might want to just kill the two Dragoons right there. He looks like he's going to pull out of that location instead but nice lockdown to go ahead and save a, that could have been a lot more damage there at the nine o'clock but problems for radley overall is he still needs to rebuild his siege tank count that mech count does he have a nuke active no nuke active currently and mr cat has moved in top right and dropped several gateways there as well so he can play refugee style drop on a lot of this he's got a full energy arbiter to maybe go for a recall if he wants but Mr. Cat has a... I guess both players have a massive bank behind all of this. But Mr. Cat theoretically will have the stronger bank over the long term. Because he's currently controlling bottom right and top right. And usually you just need to be one base up. Beautiful stasis. Really exposing a lot of this army. A big swarm. And it looks like Mr. Cat, recognizing there's just not a lot of defense for is going to be able to move into the 9 o'clock with those Dragoons and that Zealot. The ghost trying to... <laughs> actually, the ghost being annoying with that medic. So medic wiped out first, then the ghost follow-up. And unfortunately for Radley, with the follow-up uh, tank movement, he's not providing vulture support, so these dragoons are just walking right up to them and wiping them out. So 9 o'clock base looks like it's all but forfeit for Radley, which leaves him to his mineral only and nothing else. And that is currently... Looks like the, the nuke is finished, but that is currently potentially under assault. Ghost top right. Has it been detected? There's some... I think the ghost has been detected. 
waiting for an observer to make its way. A cannon getting dropped. Yeah, I think it ended up shooting a probe, probably. Which revealed its location. Instead, the ghost's gonna try to wind around and get a nuke. That's only six probes, though, and maybe some cannons. That's not gonna be... That's not worth the 9 o'clock base. So, yeah, there's the nuke dropping. It looks like that had to be cancelled. Unless I'm missing a red dot somewhere else on the map. Does it cancel? Actually... Hold on, I need to check territory now. Did I miss it again? I don't think so. Now I'm confused. I think the cancellation doesn't save the nuke, apparently. I didn't realize that. I thought it saved the nuke. Mr. Cat continuing to press in towards that mineral only. And now I just, I just don't think Radley has enough troops to defend this. However, there is a lack of observers on Mr. Cat's side of the map, which hurts not just for dealing with the ghosts, but those spider mines. This is Radley's last mining base, so if this goes down, should be a Mr. Cat victory. Also, it's got that precious nuclear payload. More units storming back out. There are some siege tanks that have reestablished themselves, and some clutter there at the 9 o'clock. Looks like Radley is going to be able to maybe... Ooh, some decent mind drags right as these siege tanks are landing. Dragoon's getting annihilated, however, at the 9 o'clock. That's making the supply counts a bit closer. It looks like that silo is going to drop as well. Doesn't negate the usage of ghosts, but certainly doesn't help. And now Mr. Cat just barreling in with more troops, which I think he can afford to do. He can just, he's got a large enough bank where as long as he keeps Radley from mining here, that should be, uh, mining at one of these bases, that should be victory. So just continuing to storm in with the Dragoons. He could probably, if he's got another Arbiter out in the field, which I'm not seeing him constructing, he could probably recall over that nine. Siege Tank's just wandering up to the high ground right there. I think maybe he was hoping for a draw. Oh, did was able to draw into the mines there on the low ground. But SCVs at the last, well, second to last mining base, taking a lot of hit, and I think that command center probably could get focus fired down. This is nearly a full control, I think this is a full control group, yeah, of Dragoons and Zealots. So finally that command center getting lifted off to try to salvage it. <laughs> the spread of observers to try to find ghosts midfield from the top right few lockdowns, but that's, that is not going to be sufficient. Distance mining out from those SCVs. And Mr. Cat going to pull back after creating some of that economic havoc and just going to walk up to the 9 o'clock. Zealot lead. It's going to take a while for these units to get through. The SCVs doing a good job of blockading. Defending themselves, but still might be able to create some havoc here. Radley going for a counterattack top right. The problem with counterattacking top right, though, is, is even if he manages to take down all of those bases, Mr. Cat still has bottom left and a lot of infrastructure there. Ghost doing a pretty good job of at least slowing this down. It looks like... Is there a medic alongside? No medic alongside. That was weird. It looked like it went into the red and went back into the yellow for a moment there. Radley staging up top right. Mr. Cat moving a lot of troops to engage this. Unfortunately, it's spread out and some de decent uh, lockdowns making it hard for the troops to get on top of the siege tanks. Some Dragoons have managed to sneak through, but pretty decent trades actually for Radley. He, he needs decent trades to stay in this. Four siege tanks remaining, and it looks like that is in fact going to get cleaned up. That provided a little bit of breathing room. Some more Zealots trying to march into that 9 o'clock and create some havoc at the mineral only. And let's see if Mr. Cat continues... He could just grab the mineral only himself, top right, to absolutely cap this. Not much left to defend for Radley at that mineral only. And he's got three siege tanks and two ghosts with some supply depots to provide the defense otherwise. Still trying to make an assault, but this is leaving that army in the open and vulnerable. Mid-map. Massive supply lead for Mr. Cat right here. I think he's got this locked if he just keeps the macro up, and you can just see the differential in the the, the resources. I wanted to say supplies, but that would be a little bit confusing. <clears throat> Zealots again 
getting just on top of the siege tanks, but not enough for a mind drag. Mr. Cat just E moving into this. Ogre Protoss style. Does he have more reinforcements making their way that direction? It does not look like it. So the three siege tanks and single vulture will be sufficient. But there's only two SCVs remaining at the mineral only as is. And I'm still looking for an Arbiter recall potentially. I haven't seen an Arbiter on the map in quite some time. That Stargate's remained silent. To maybe drop into that 9 o'clock. And that has... yet to uh, happen as well. Mr. Cat instead, still a massive supply lead, throwing troops again and uh, again very spread out, so I'm a bit concerned, but the Zelts this time able to get on top of the initial siege tanks, Radley reinforcing, but just as he's reinforcing, the Dragoons are there in the open. Vulture reinforcements from the close position able to at least keep that alive. But Mr. Cat can afford to keep doing this, whereas Radley cannot. Only, and it looks like the reinforcements came from the 9 o'clock. There's only a single siege tank left. So actually a shuttle could breach that at this stage. Presuming it could get past the lockdown. So Mr. Cat regrouping. Radley getting aggressive. I think recognizing that he needs to establish an additional base. So trying to re-engage bottom left. Might end up with an okay engagement right here. Mr. Cat coming in piecemeal. And with, I, looks like the Dragoons are able to get underneath the siege tank, so that's going to get wiped out. And this is just turning into a massive, kind of the late stages of like a boxing match where both players are, both opponents are bloodied and they're just kind of throwing what they've got. And it looks like Mr. Cat, as far as the long run, has more juice in the tank. You can even see from the macro cycles in the top left, he's able to rebuild pretty rapidly where I think Radley has to be a little bit more choosy and establish the lines. So he does have a, a good saturation there, but in the meantime, some mine clearage at the natural expansion. Mr. Cat sweeping all the way around to get on top of the siege tank. SCV were there, so it's a, a yeah two-pronged attack, Radley. I kind of call well played for game one. GG, guys. I'll leave the text here. I like the creativity from Radley, I have to say. It looks like we're... The amount of cheese at the beginning not working. This is quite a game. But you played with... Yeah, you played with 1-1 one, one upgrades the entire time. Mr. Guy with a big smile at the end. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.